We begin the conversation today in Nigeria, where the two largest workers' unions are preparing for an indefinite strike starting next week due to the government's decision to eliminate a long-standing petrol subsidy causing a cost-of-living crisis. This subsidy had historically kept fuel prices low but strained government finances, resulting in surging prices for essential commodities like food, transportation and electricity, particularly as many rely on petrol generators for power. Scheduled to commence on the 3rd of October, the strike organized by the Nigeria Labour Congress and Trade Union Congress aims for a comprehensive shutdown until the government addresses the demands of Nigerian workers and the wider population. The unions are frustrated with the government's lack of meaningful engagement on issues related to the adverse consequences of the petrol price hike. Now, joining me this evening uh, for this discussion is Comrade Bosun Olabi, the chairman of the Trade Union Congress, or your chapter, and Comrade Kaide Martins, chairman, Nigeria Labour Congress, or your chapter. A warm welcome to you, gentlemen, and thanks for joining me today on the conversation. Now, I'd like, to, you. Uh, I'd like to start and, uh, with you, uh, Comrade Olabi. What are the underlying socio-economic and political factors that have culminated in the decision of both the TUC and the Nigerian Labour Congress to embark on an indefinite strike on the 3rd of October? Uh, well, um, thank, thank you. I, I think it's very straightforward and uh, it is not something that uh, is debatable. Both um, the Nigerian citizens and even the government, everybody will come to agreement that life is hard for everybody since the removal, even before the removal of the first subsidy, things are not the way they should be in Nigeria. So uh, now to now have the removal of the first subsidy to it, it makes it now totally cumbersome, like it's not good for people again. And just like I said, it is not something that is in doubt. It is not something that we are debating. Both sides have agreed that the life of people have been terribly um, impacted negatively since uh, the first subsidy was removed. The price of commodity, the price of transportation, the price of doing anything in Nigeria now skyrocketed due to the influence of um, the first subsidy that, that was removed on all products and commodities. So it, it is not something that we have been labor. It is not something that needs further explanation or further discussion. It is clear. And all Nigerians, both the government and the people, have agreed that the lives of people have been affected negatively, impacted negatively because of the removal. And that is what we have been asking for. We were never against the removal of the first subsidy, but we are saying that before you go ahead with this massive, massive policy, there should be something in place that will make the life of people better, that will make people to be able to cushion the effect that will definitely come from it. But the government didn't do that unilaterally without having discussions with major stakeholders or major you now pronounce that the first subsidy is gone now. And that is the reason why after several consultations, after several talking to, after several perseverance, mm -hmm. the government have failed to do anything. The government have failed to move and to show their readiness to make sure that things are going to be better for the people. And that was why after series of ultimatum, series of warnings and all that, we have decided both umbrella, NLC and TUC, that we are going on indefinite strike, starting from zero zero hours of Tuesday, third of October. Now, now staying with you, Comrade Olabi, uh, you did highlight some of the reasons why the NLC and TUC have decided to go on strike. Uh, would you say that you've been patient with the government? Because uh, some might look at it that, you know, some of these policies do take time uh, to yield results. And the government has given states five billion uh, naira. They've also talked about the provision of uh, CNG buses to alleviate uh, transportation uh, for workers and other palliative measures. Are they not enough? Is the NLC and TUC asking for too much, uh, looking at the present day economic realities. And let's not also forget the issue of a 200 proposed 200% uh, minimum wage increase. 
I, I would like us to take it um, step step by step. I think the first thing is that after the removal of the first subsidy, the federal government came out that they are making savings from that policy. That immediately they have been able to withdraw the first subsidy and nothing is being paid again. They are saving money, and that is fine. We are not asking that the government should pump in the old money that they are saving from the removal of first subsidy into the pocket of the people. And we have analyzed it that we have some things that are short term, medium term, and long term. We know some things cannot be done immediately. If we say our refineries should work now, give or take, that will not happen in the next one month, it will not happen maybe even in the next two months. Those are not the things that we are asking. Yes, yes. We are not saying that the issue of CNG should start taking effect immediately. We are not asking for that. We just want to know the plan they have to, for the CNG conversion, the kids, and the point where people will be able to get the gas. We want to know their plans. But on the immediate, we are saying that the people that are bearing this brunt, let that be a cash transfer, maybe in form of minimum wage review or wage award. In the case of minimum wage review, which would have been our best option, we know that several parties will have to come together, the employers, the, empl the representatives of the employee, which is the labor union, and even government. All of them will have to come together, agree on it based on current realities before they will pass it to the uh, salaries and wages commissions before it mm -hmm. go into the several uh, lawmaking houses and it becomes a law and then implementation. So we know this might take a time and that was why we said, okay, let's go for the option of wage award, wherein we don't need to sit down with anybody. They will use their own discretion to pronounce an amount and give to workers so that people will be able to live their lives again. Because as at the moment, so many Nigerians are not living any longer. People are working on the street. People are getting sick. Some have died due to the result of this hardship. People are not able to feed properly any longer. So these are issues. And okay. we want things to be done immediately. And if you uh, thank, from Com 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 Lobby, this, you know, uh, if you could just give me a second there, I would like to pick up from uh, where you left off and bring Comrade Shegu Martins into the conversation. Uh, Comrade uh, Shegu Coyote Martins is German of the NLC in or your state or your state chapter. One well, welcome to you, uh, Comrade. Now, Comrade Olabi just uh, told us how people are dying and how uh, they're feeling the adverse effects of this uh, removal of fuel subsidy. How has the removal of petrol subsidies specifically impacted different segments of the Nigerian population, especially the workers? What sectors of the economy have been most affected? Thank you, my brother. N Nigeria solely depends on, uh, on uh, petrol. It's quite unfortunate that uh, the government have not been able to, to break that particular mo mono economic base. And uh, whenever anything, anything is done, as per petrol price, it's going to have direct impact on every other thing. The impact will be on the face of it, of every other aspect in the society. Uh, the cost of living immediately will shoot up. And the masses, and especially workers, are not left behind. As of today, we find it difficult to fail, like as those of us having, a, uh, having um, uh, one bank or the other. Cost of transportation. I told our governor here in the state that to, to transport ourselves to office now is no more conducive. If the cost of living has gone up, cost of transportation has uh, increased, and go to the market now. What we have now uh, as a minimum wage is it's nothing to write home all about. We have a worker who have uh, to transport himself to office. We, uh, we spend nothing less than 2,500 naira in a day. And such is fixed for 30,000 naira as, as, as a monthly salary. What, what do you expect of him or her? Hmm. Now, stay with whatever, you. Happens yeah. to, whatever happens to fuel price affects every other thing in this country. The government is very much aware of that. It's quite unfortunate that the president without giving cognizance uh, uh, 
uh, thought to that, went ahead, increased the fuel price, and we asked him, sir. Yeah, but Comrade, Comrade Martin, I'm not, I'm not speaking for the government of Nigeria, but uh, if we do track back a bit, I believe uh, the leading candidates of the political parties that contested the elections uh, also did say that, you know, this subsidy regime is not sustainable. And the generality of Nigeria said, you know, the government is spending too much and fuel subsidy. But now that it's been taken away, uh, the NLC and TUC, they're speaking another uh, language, uh, the subsidy uh, regime had to go. So are you calling for government to uh, return back to the way things were and pay uh, these billions that could be used for development of education, healthcare, and other projects on cheap petrol for Nigerians? Th thank you, my brother. At the initial stage, we told them the, the, the actual price of bringing in uh, uh, PMAs is not what the government do declare to Nigeria. Immediately it was removed. Within two weeks, within two weeks, the federal government announced the highest money accrued to the ports of the, uh, of the country, 1.9 trillion naira. Where do you think that money comes from? From the exorbitant amounts they sold PMS to Nigerians. They couldn't one way or the other cover up that. And immediately the, the, the president announced the governor's forum went ahead to meet him. We asked him, okay, this money comes from the purses of the masses, the sovereign masses of Nigeria. There are ways by which you can use this money to cushion the effects of the same people who directly contributed this money. That is where the fallout between the labor movement and the government started. They remain other man, they, they love it that way, especially the government, the, the governor's forum. They went to Abuja to this Mr. President not to give back the money to the masses. We ask them a lot is happening in the educational sector, the public sector, the public mm -hmm. uh, service sector, and the likes. They turn a deaf ear. That what really called for the, the two days warning strike and some other uh, fallout. We told them, put the refineries in place before you have the subsidy removed. If a particular amount of uh, fuel is being uh, stolen out of the country, find a way to curb it. Every country in the whole world has one thing or the other they subsidize. Mm. If there are some cabals eating up this particular thing, why can't you go after them instead of directly inflicting the suffering on Nigerian people? Who is paying the price now? I do say it's no member of uh, any political office order, none of them buys petrol. The direct impact is on the masses and the workers. Thank you very much, Comrade Martins. I'd like to bring Comrade Olabi back into the conversation. I remember I spoke to you on one of our programs a few weeks ago uh, when the TUC did not join the warning strike, I believe, of the Nigerian Labour Congress, and they didn't uh, seem to agree on a number of specific issues. But now uh, they've joined forces together and they've said that, look, on the 3rd of October, we're going to uh, commence this indefinite strike. Now, my question to you is, uh, will this strike... Uh, not further complicate or uh, bring more sufferance to the Nigerian masses as it's going to uh, be a huge disruption. And is there still uh, communication channels or there still avenues uh, for communication uh, where the government can avert uh, this strike or is it bound to happen? Yeah, uh, firstly, I'm happy um for us not acknowledging that both TUC and NLC, um, we are together. And I believe there is nothing that is going to separate us because we have common agenda, we have common goal, we are striving for the same purpose. And to your question directly, this strike has been declared and we have started mobilizing. And we are going to do our best. And to the question that we need not add to the suffering of the people, I think there is no more suffering that can be worse than what we are saying right now. People are not able to eat. People are not able to transport themselves from one place to the other. All infrastructures that we have in Nigeria, they are dilapidated. People cannot go to public hospitals. Public schools are no more functioning. There is nothing. So we are already at the zero level. 
So there is no nothing that can be worse than this. We are at the stage whereby we need to stand up for ourselves and reclaim this country back. And just like you said, that the three candidates were saying they will remove first subsidy before now. We were never against that. But the time for politics is over. It is not the time for governance. And we know somebody that is there now who we can relate with, who we can talk to. And that is the person we are focusing on. We have never said don't remove this subsidy, but let there be a complete plan on ground mm -hmm. before this subsidy will be removed so that the lives of people will not be passed. And that is the way we have it. So strike or no strike, the lives of people is already in ground zero. So I don't see the strike impacting people negatively, even beyond what we already have. People are already, they already have their past. So where, 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 should the they, where, where should they expect disruptions? When, you, when the TUC and Nigeria Labour Congress go and strike, uh, what does it mean? Um, what impact will it have on the nation? What services will not be rendered? Let, let, let's, 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 let's be factual to ourselves. Even when we have not withdrawn our services, people are not getting the dividends of democracy. People are not eating from their sweat. The federal government is making money, all the state governments are making money, but all those money in turn are not getting into the hands of people to benefit from. So when we withdraw our services and everything stands still, maybe we'll be able to come to a round table and speak with all manner of, um, of seriousness. Everybody will be sensitive to each other. But if things are still going on the way it is, then there is no reason why governments should change their mode of dealing with us and dealing with Nigeria. But by the time every, for everything is time stay, we will draw our services across indefinitely. We will be able to come to the round table and then every, both parties will be serious on the table. Both parties will give the discussion or the seriousness it, 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 it should get at that time. And that is the whole lesson. And just like you said, we are not going to close um, the window of discussion. If discussions happen and we will see that there are things being done, it is now time for action. It is not time for discussion any longer. We have listened to soon, and very soon we will do something, we will do this, we will do this. We want to start seeing things happening. So once we see things start happening, we will be able to say, okay, I okay. think we are at the stage whereby we need to go back to work and make things work again. But at this moment, the time for discussion is long gone. It is time for action. It is time for things that we can relate to as Nigerians and especially as workers in this country. Thank you, Comrade Olavi. Now, Comrade Martins, uh, what has been the history of negotiations between the Nigerian government and labor unions leading up to this moment where both the, TL, uh, where both the NLC and the uh, TUC have said, look, we're going on this strike on the 3rd of October, this indefinite strike. Have there been any noteworthy points of contention or agreement and uh, what are the sticking points? Once again, thank you, my brother. At, at the initial time, the government got, they put uh, yeah, a committee in place. And the chief of staff was asked to preside over that committee. On three different occasions, the labor leaders went to his office. The last time they spent up to three hours, he did not show up before we went for that two days of warning strike. And immediately the strike was uh, pronounced. The president said we should give him 14 days. Coincidentally, the strike was called with a 14 days uh, ultimatum. Government did not do anything. They called for a meeting two days ago, and their intention is to avert the strike, not to give in to our demands, not to give attention. That's what they do many a times. Mm. And the issue has uh, really uh, uh, told us, taught us, that the only language they, our leaders, the government in Nigeria, understand is uh, until you go on strike. It's quite unfortunate. A sitting Senate told us, until you are on the street, these people will not give you any attention. It's quite unfortunate. A sitting Senate so, told us that. Thank you. Many a times, yeah. go, only, go ahead, go only, ahead, please. They only want to avert the strike. They wouldn't want you to go on the streets. They wouldn't want you to expose them. The body language is that until you go there, we will not yield. And it is not good enough. 
Okay, so uh, from what you said, uh, the last few meetings has been, <laughs> I mean, let's put aside, uh, the, from, the, from what you've told us, that the government has been saying, let's put aside this demand, but let's have a meeting on how you avert this imp uh, impending uh, strike. Now, back to you, Comrade Olabi. Uh, could you offer Nigerians and our viewers a comprehensive assessment of the economic challenges currently facing Nigeria, which they are uh, quite a lot, elaborating on the root causes and the interconnections of issues such as double-digit inflation, foreign currency shortages, foreign currency shortages, and low oil production. What is the, uh, what's your assessment of the state of the Nigerian economy now? Okay, thank you. Uh, and I think it's very simple and uh, almost all Nigerians are becoming economists now because our problems are so um, profound and uh, um, elaborate. It, it, it's clear that Nigeria has crude oil and we have only relied on crude oil sales, not even turning, in, turning it into what is useful. Crude oil on its own is good, but it is until we're able to turn it into elements and um, um, items that are useful, like the PMS, like the diesel, like the jet fuel, like the kerosene, that is when it becomes useful. But Nigeria, for a very long time, has not been able to do that. And also, apart from concentrating on fuel, we have not been able to diversify this economy into using other means to and foreign currency, everything. The most of important problem we're having in this country today is because we rely so much on foreign exchange that we are not able to get. That is the hallmark of our problem. We rely so much on a foreign exchange, on a foreign currency that we are not able to get. And Nigeria cannot print dollars. Everything you want to do, you want to do roads, you want to do hospitals, you want to bring electricity, you want to do any infrastructure, in as much as you are not able to provide it for yourself, you have to bring in people from abroad. And the kinds of transactions will be in hard currency. And we are not selling anything out to end this. The only thing we are selling out to end it is crude in its, in, in its raw form. Once we give it out, they give us refined product. So it means we are almost zero. We use the crude to swap for refined product. It means so we are not getting zero. At times, we will even have to repay, to pay more for the refined product. So that's where our problem lies. Nigeria needs to do something almost immediately. We need to bring electricity back to Nigeria. Darkness is all over the country. And that's why most companies have left Nigeria. They are not ready to do business there because their cost of production has gone high. We need to make sure that we refine our product locally and be able to sell refined product, which is a useful product, to other neighboring countries, just like we are buying from them. This is, that is the time we will be able to attract the foreign currencies that we will be able to use to build infrastructure. In Nigeria now, people don't have good accommodation. All the roads are bad. Look at all the roads linking all state capitals in this country. Almost all of them are bad. Roads inside the towns, almost all of them are terribly bad. There is no electricity anywhere. People will still have to use their hard end salaries to buy this fuel to power generators and other um, mode of uh, generating power. Most people are going into solar energies. These, these solar energies ordinarily should be in rural areas where there is no light, where we are not able to get to easily. But it has become the order of the day even in the metropolis. So our problem is deep seated on the fact that we are not producing anything, we are just consuming. The only thing we are producing, we are selling it in raw form that is not making this country to go forward. So Nigeria needs to be producing. We need to bring back electricity. We need to bring back our refineries so that we will not rely on outsiders to give us a fine product. Okay. So these are the reasons why some people campaign and won election, and that is the job they have to do. So we have given our ideas to them over the period of time, which is primarily not our job to do. But as patriotic Nigerians, we have collaborated with them, suggested to them so many things. But we don't want to dabble into that so that it won't become a matter of we want to be governing the country on their behalf. We just want the lives of people, especially the workers, and by extension, Nigerian people, to be better based on the fact that this is a very good country. This is a country that should be that, that, that should be highly productive. This is a country where people slide. But things have happened over the period of time due to poor leadership. And we are with the new government now. And we will not rest. We will not want to allow too much time to anybody so that 
another four years will just go like this and the story will still remain the same. So Nigeria needs light, we need our refineries to work, we need roads to link up everywhere and go into other infrastructure. All these things may be long term, but on the short time, people must be alive first and foremost before they can enjoy all those things. So that is what we believe that is basic, that has ruined this economy, that has ruined this country. But we will not fold our hands again until another four years will just pass by and people will come again, bet for our vote, we give it to them, mm. and things will just be moving around in circles like that. Okay. Now, Comrade Shegel Martins, I did pose this question in some form uh, to uh, Comrade Olabi earlier during the program, and I, I said, "Have we crossed the Rubicon? Is this still is is uh, is this still possible to avert this strike?" And also, considering the fragile state of Nigeria's economy, uh, there are potential political and economic consequences of this strike. Don't you think you will be further hurting uh, the long-suffering Nigerian masses by embarking on this strike? It will be a disruption to the Nigerian economy and also uh, to their livelihoods. Thank you. Everything is in the hand of the federal government, uh, both the federal and the state government. We were told that by October 1st, it's likely Mr. President pronounced the wage award and uh, give a uh, thought to all our demands. But let me say a wise uh, leader should do everything in their power to abate it. So they still have a couple of days to do the needful. We are peace-loving uh, uh, citizens of this country. We are, we are stakeholders. We have nowhere to roam. Most of them have, uh, they have their houses uh, in, uh, in other countries. We have nowhere to run to. So if the NIFU is done, I, 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 I believe we will have a good, uh, uh, the, the, the strike will be abated. Between now and, and, and uh, October 2nd, something could be done. Okay, uh, let's skip the hope. Now back to you, Comrade Olabi. Drawing from historical examples, what lessons can be learned from past strikes and protests in Nigeria? And how might this uh, inform our understanding of the likely outcomes of the current labor strike? Uh, I mean, uh, your uh, fellow panelists, uh, Comrade Martins, uh, they'd say, you know, let's, let's be hopeful. Let's wait for the president's uh, October 1st speech. And there's no uh, way he'll give a speech without addressing some of this current economic realities and the hardship Nigerians are facing. So uh, given that as a background, what's your response uh, to the question? Yeah, I, I think um, it is time for everybody to start uh, believing each other again. I've heard so many things about labor, labor leaders and our strike, and so many people have different opinion. But I think we have gotten to a time where everybody will need to join hands together, not just workers alone, but even all patriotic Nigerians. It is uh, high time we stood up to our responsibilities and ask the right questions at the right time. And that is what we want to do. And that is what we want to start. And I can assure you, the leadership of both um, umbrella bodies, NLC and TUC, Comrade Festo Susifu and Comrade Joe Ajero, they are people that have shown over the period of time that they have everything uh, to lead Nigerians to ask the government for our rights. So uh, it still could have happened, some other strike could have happened one way or the other. But I want to believe that this time around, all Nigerians should stand up and support this cause and support everything that we want to do. Yes, it is not strike that we are interested in. What we are interested in is in the life of people getting better. And just like my uh, colleague said, if things happen in action this time around, not in words any longer, if we could see that there is traction that are actionable and actions following them immediately, we, 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 we may have reason to review our position and the sun that is still outside there is enough to dry the, 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 the cloak. We still have up to two, three working days and even over the weekend, nobody's supposed to be sleeping. And that should be what the government should be doing now in a way to meet the demand of the people and the demand of the worker so that the peace that has been reigning will continue to reign. But if all these things are not done, 
I can assure you that this stripe that has been called is going to be one that is different from what we have done, done uh, we have seen severally before. Okay. We will pursue it to start mobilizing our people and we will give it all, all attention that it takes to make sure that it is successful. And until things are done with actions, I don't think we are going to back out of this um, strike. Thank you very much uh, to my distinguished guests. We will definitely uh, continue to monitor the situation in the next 72 hours uh, before Nigeria's Independence Day. Hopefully, uh, we will find a truce or Mr. President uh, will announce uh, measures uh, that will further measures to alleviate the sufferings of Nigerians as a result of the removal of the fuel subsidy. Thank you so much, Comrade Bosson Alabi, Chairman, Trade Union Congress or your chapter, and also Comrade Kaede Martin. Thank you. Uh, Chairman, Nigeria Labour Congress or your chapter. It was a pleasure having you both join us uh, today on The Conversation. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you. You're watching The Conversation on New Central Television. When we return from this quick timeout, we will be switching gears to Cameron with Minister of Communication, Rene Emmanuel Sadi, as he should have stood warning against speculation of a possible coup in the country. We'll discuss this and more when we return. Stay with us.